Hello and welcome to Hell's Light Show. This will be our first video ever made. Hopefully it'll help some people out. The main goal today is to show some of the tools that are used when working with pixels. Uh, been doing this project now for a few years. Started about four years ago using LOR. You know, went from that to the next year. Added a pixel tree using LOR with x -Lights programming. Last year went all pixel and uh, learned a lot in a year. Spent some money shouldn't have spent and hopefully this will give some people some ideas of some things they need to use in order to go all pixel. And that's the goal today is to help you out, maybe save you some money on learning some mistakes I've made on tools. So we'll start off with, there's no particular order here. Let me start off with this here. Um, there's been no endorsements from anybody. I've got no sponsors, nothing like that going on with this. This is all my personal opinion. A lot of them out there. Uh, there is no definitely right or wrong way to do pixels. There are some wrong ways, but um, the main thing is there's no 100% right way. So these tools that I've used over the last year and uh, spent some money on things I shouldn't have spent on, that kind of item. So let's go through it and look at what we got here in no particular order. I'm going to start off with the heat gun. Heat guns come in handy. There's different kinds of heat guns you can have. This one here I got years ago on a clearance sale is why I bought it. And I use it a lot for different things. Uh, bending pipe, PVC pipes, uh, using heat shrink tubing, things like that, and different items on that we can use this for. It comes in very handy, very useful item to have. We'll go off next with uh, some more heat items. This is a little blowtorch you can get. You can use a blowtorch like this. This one here is a more precise blowtorch. Pencil type low torch that can be used. They use these a lot for when I'm out in the yard possibly working with some shriek tubing stuff like that or making some connections. I can use these items out in the yard easier than running um, power cords. So I've got some items like that that we use. Safety glasses. You always need safety glasses when working because you work with different items that can pop up hitting your eyes. I use those. I also use this more than anything else. This is my magnification glasses. I use these. I can see closely on items I'm working on. So you need glasses of some kind to protect your eyes to work with. You'll need uh, some kind of tool. This is what I had years and years ago and everything. I've actually uh, modified it to an extent, but it's uh, one that you can use to clamp wires. And that's what I use it mostly for is wires. When I'm soldering wires together, clamp, hold wires together. Need something along that line there. Let's go next to our utility device. Be using utility knives for different items and stuff and everything. You're going to need sharp blades for cutting all different items. I recommend that you go with metal over a plastic if you can. The metal seems to hold up stronger, easier, holds its place more. The plastic wants to slide. So if you get a choice of buying, this is a metal case, but this here part's plastic. So go with an all metal. That way you've got the all metal piece and everything holds you stronger and stuff. But I use both of these for different things. Measuring tape, obviously you have to have a way to measure distances and stuff. I use measuring tapes, I use rulers, uh, different things I use for measuring depending on what I'm going to make measurements of. Let's go next with some lighting techniques. You're going to need some way to see some lights. I'll use, this is a light I have here. It's an easy light to use. It's also magnetic on the bottom. It sticks to things that are, that are metal and it'll hold in place. So you can use that if you need to. Come out somewhere so you can see. Head. This one here I got from Harbor Freight. I uh, use mainly Amazon, Harbor Freight, and Lowe's is where most of my stuff comes from. This was free. I've got several items I'll go through that were free that I got from Harbor Freight. This works great, especially when you're working in the yard on items that you can go out there at night when it's dark and you have this on your head. Your hands are free to work with. I use it inside sometimes, working on items also. So you need some kind of lighting. Obvious things you're going to want. Uh, there's a drill and drill bits. Got some drill bits here. Different kind of drill bits you can have. Again, the Harbor Freight drill bits. Now, this is a little more expensive tool I got here. Things that I use a lot, I'm going to use on other items and just for like the projects on pixels and stuff, I spend more money on. Uh, you can get these things cheap or you can pay a lot of money, whatever you want to do, but you need some kind of drill, cord or cordless, whatever you want to do. Cordless comes in handy working in the yard, so I use this one here a lot. 
We'll go to uh, just regular pliers next. The different kind of pliers you're going to need. I use uh, the vice grips because they lock in place and I have different sizes. I actually have three total different sizes. One's out in the shop right now. I have three locations I usually work. One's in this room here. Uh, I have a shed out back that's a workshop that I have a drill press in and a cutoff saw and things along that line. So bigger tools. And I work in the shed for that. I work in the garage sometimes when it's especially cold outside. I have a whole rack out there full of supplies and stuff for working with pixels and so forth. You have wire cutters, needle nose and wire cutters. These come in handy. I use these a lot. So you're going to need some kind of pliers, some kind of tools to work with. They can be expensive, can be cheap, whatever you want. Um, this one here is a pipe cutting tool that I've got. It's a simple cool tool to cut metal pipe. It can be used to cut plastic pipe, I guess, but I use it for metal pipe, which is mostly used for structures and things to mount my props and stuff to in my show. This here is another pipe cutter that comes in very handy. It's a pipe cutter that's used to cut PVC pipe. And I use it a lot. It clamps down on it. It'll cut clean through it. I'll use it also. Not made for it, but I use it to cut uh, small diameter uh, dowel rods and things like that that I use in the show different places. Very handy tool to have. We'll go on next to this one here. This tool here I got at uh, Harbor Freight also. I'm not even sure what it's called exactly, but I use it for shaping metal. Uh, metal sheets and so forth. A lot of the products I make uh, for my show I will use a vent system that I build myself. I'll drill holes into my uh, mounting box, whatever type of box I'm using. I'll drill holes in that. Then I'll bend a sheet metal to build a vent cover for it that'll go over the vent and I use these for that. Plus they come in handy for other things such as when I heat up a PVC pipe I can flatten it to uh, make it easier to work with and different aspects of using pixels. We'll go next to Dremel tools. Actually I have two different kinds of Dremel tools. You have the Dremel tool which is corded and comes in handy there. I also have a mounting system which is out in the shed that makes it into like a router where I can put on here and use it as a router if I need to do that. It's all jumbled up in there but it works as corded. The one I use the most is going to be this one here, which is a cordless Dremel tool. Comes in handy. I also have in here a drill bit, which is not easy to find right now. Drill bit fits right in here and it comes out perfectly. The uh, right size for drilling holes to mount um, spacers, which you'll be using during your building of your uh, controller. So I use this a lot for that and then drilling other holes. The small holes are just cutting. It also has cut off wheels that come in very handy. Moving on, uh, wire strippers. So you have wire strippers. These here are handy strippers to have. You must have some kind of wire strippers to use. These here are handy to use. I use them for cutting mostly. I'll have this tool here is going to be what a must tool you must have. Saves you time, a lot of work. This tool here can be used for stripping. You have to adjust it to make sure it's in the right position. Then put it over your wire and then strip your wire off. And you're like, well, you may cut too deep, strip some extra wires out. But this tool here comes in real handy. Because I can put it on this piece right here, like so. I can go like that, pull that off, go to the next wires. I put all three in together like this, put it in here, and there's my wire strip. It's that simple. Love this tool. If you're going to be doing pixels at some point in time, you will be doing a lot of wire stripping and building different size props and different size strings. You're going to need something like this. Let's go to next, just the simple tools. This is a real simple tip tool kit I got um, at Walmart. Ten bucks or less. It has a lot of uh, sizes in here. It's got some different sockets you can use. It's got a small and large screwdriver set. Comes in very handy. Uh, use this daily whenever I work. 
Next we'll go to, we'll do this one here. This here's a tool that I got uh, just recently. It's a uh, cordless, but it's a scissors. They cut. Kind of loud, but it does great for Coro. Uh, when I'm using Coroplast, building projects like that, I was cutting them by hand uh, before either using scissors or using uh, X-Acto knives and stuff like that or whatever utility knife I could get. Bought these here and it goes right through, shapes what you want to do. It's a great tool to have. I love having it now. Soldering gun. You're going to need a soldering gun. There's going to be times when you solder, you're going to have to work and solder items together. Soldering gun is a must. Uh, keep this here handy. Um, use it a lot, so you make sure you have a soldering gun. This one here is my tin snips. I use them for cutting the metal. Uh, other items too, uh, sometimes thicker wire can cut this here or things I got to shape and make. I use these a lot, but mainly for cutting metal. Another must have. If you're going to be building and working in this project very long, you're going to be making your Cat5, Cat6 cables, whatever you decide to use, you're going to be making cables. Cables have to have a way of being tested. Because trust me, um, here's one I just took out recently, but this test here, you can take this here and plug one end into one end and the other end, you've tested it and it'll show you if it's a good cable or not. The last thing you want to do is burn a controller up or have problems because of the fact that you've miswired building one of these cables. I actually fried a $35 part, which caused me to buy this. And I bought this at uh, Lowe's. So make sure you buy something like this that will give you the ability to test your cables, make sure they're correct, they're working right. I also had a problem last year that after I built the cable, it worked great when I built it. But during the show, I had a prop that wouldn't work. And I couldn't figure out why. I got online, talked to some people online and stuff, and they said, test your cable. Tested my cable, sure enough, one of my connections had failed, and therefore my prop didn't work. New cable, guess what? It worked just great. So this is a great tool to have. Along with this, is going to be tools you're going to need to build your cables with. These here are the crimpers that are used on, I'm not sure what we're at right now. You're going to have these that you're going to be using to put on the end of your cables and so forth. So when you put those on there, you use these to clamp them down. I suggest, I bought this tool first, which is a great tool to have. It actually has a cutter on it and it has a stripper on it where you can strip your Cat5 cables and not cut into them very deep. That comes in handy. However, this one here, the end pieces that came with it, you couldn't very well control. When I bought this one here, I bought this one here because they're pass-through. You're going to want pass-through end connectors for your Cat5 cables. It makes it a lot easier to work with, a lot simpler to work with. You make sure you get your order right on your um, wires when you're putting them in. When you clamp this one down, it actually goes up, and this cutter here will cut off the extra um, wire, and therefore you have a clean cut, and it works great. You're going to want something like that to go along with this tool here. Fix Whenever you're uh, installing pixels, you can push them in by hand. This one here is one that I've used. This one here is actually um, I bought off Amazon. It's for automotive use is what it's for. And um, But they sell these online also. Uh, Holiday Coral may sell them, I think. There's different companies that sell them. These here I bought. I made a, something similar to this a year ago working with uh, Square Pixels. Saw this online. I bought it. Uh, it may have been Bosco Oil or Holiday Coral. I don't remember where I bought that one from, but I bought it online as well. I'm going to go down to testers now. So, this one here I got free. Came from uh, Harbor Freight Free. So, you want to uh, use stuff like this. It comes in handy. It's good to have. It can test uh, voltages, it can test continuity, so forth, and everything. It's great. I wouldn't have probably bought it, but it was free, so I got it for free. This is where some money comes into play, though. You're going to be able to test amps and so forth, test things, test connections, test voltages. And I bought this one here. That was my mistake. I was going to buy a different one, cost more, so I bought this one here. Could have saved some money 
by passing up this item here. It's a tester. It works great to the extent that it's made for, but it did not go high enough in amperage to test the amps I needed to test. So I went and bought this one here, which is one of my favorite testers I have right now. You can turn it on. You can actually test to see if a line's hot. It has that on there. You just spin the dial and it goes different settings to set for testing what do you want to test. It plugs into just two ports where that and there you have to have different three, which one's going to be depending on what you're going to work with. So you have this here. The great thing about this one here is that I like so much, and I built this here, had some wire laying around, I made me a tester. So you have, it's actually a four wire, I only use three of them in the test. Made this for testing amperages. Plug this into the power supply, plug this into your controller. Whenever you turn your controller on, I usually do a test sequence of red, green, blue, white. Five seconds each along that line there. Let that run. You can take this here. You put it on like this right here. It goes through. It will display amperages in this display screen and tell you how many amperages that controller is drawing, which is very important, very vital, because you don't want to draw too many amps whenever you're doing this project. helps you adjust your lighting. helps you know how many props you can put on a controller. Great tool to have. Uh, whenever I run my show itself, get it running, I'll test every single one of my controllers. Watch this, and it'll fluctuate. It'll go up and down, different speeds, got different settings and stuff. It'll show the amperage that are running. And I'll take an average amperage, multiply that out, and I know how, what kind of amperage my total show runs, what kind of wattage it runs, and that tells me how much it costs to run that show. So this is something you're going to want is something like that right there. This here is one of the tools I just got recently, uh, within the last year. It's called a ferrule tool. It's actually a tool that's designed, and you go online and look up what that means. It, you uh, put ferrules in here, and they go on your end of your wire. It'll clamp down, and it makes a good connection. Always have a good connection to go off of whenever you're building a controller. Great tool to have. I love this tool here. Went through things a lot fast, but you can always go back, review slowly if you want to. Uh, a lot of items here that I've used over the years that saved me money. These two tools here, trust me, when you're pushing a thousand pixels by hand, you're going to want one of these tools. So go online, they're available. There's uh, plenty of places out there to buy stuff from. Most of the ones I buy from that I've bought from over the, the last year or two has been Wired Watts. Um, do it yourself, LED Express, uh, Boscoyo, uh, Holiday Coro. I know there's some more too. I can't think off the top of my head. I buy direct from Ray Yu in uh, China on a lot of my lighting systems and stuff. But I still buy some from those that are here in the U.S. So hopefully this will help you out some. It'll give you some idea of, of what's needed and uh, help you get started in pixels. And hopefully we'll have some more videos to come up later on that might help you more on details of how to use these tools. Thank you for watching.